Uh, the car sides. So let's take a car here. Uh, this this car right here. It's nice and colorful. You want to put some scratches in it? And, you, and this is going to be hard to do with one of those $50 cars. So you got to be careful. But where you want to scratch, uh, something else that works really good with this is those dental picks. Usually you get them up at International Rail Fair. There's that tool guy and he's got those things. Just be really careful where you put those in your toolbox because you'll find them and you'll be able to pull them out with actu without actually picking them up. They are sharp. So you're going to just put a nick in there just like you want. Uh, if it's like the door opens and it hits the ribs, and depending on the thickness of the car paint, but you can get what you need and it'll go right down to the bare plastic, that's not a problem. It's basically what you want to do. Um, the other thing is right on the door uh, guides, I do those real heavy, scrape just almost all the paint off of those where the, the wheels roll and you get a lot of rust and whatnot on those. Uh, down at the bottom here. And also on the, at the bottom of the door you get a lot of right at the bottom where the forklifts hit it and whatnot, get a lot of uh, rust and what dirt, grime and stuff in there. Uh, let's see what else, I'm gonna throw a couple more in here. Just a big old scratch on there. Hate that noise, don't you? Whenever I use the Dremel, my wife doesn't like it because it reminds her of the dentist, so I, I use the Dremel as often as, I, as, often as I can. Uh, right here on the sides where the door comes in, I usually do that pretty heavy. I used to do this <clears throat> with the sponge method because you get that. But it just didn't give the depth to it that I was looking for. And so one day I just said, well, we'll try it with a, actually put holes in it. And that's what I did. So I put little scratches. Um, I don't have my, the uh, McLeod River cars, what, I did that on that McLeod River car if you want to take that up and look at it. Um, that's got a lot of scratches and cuts and nicks and whatnot in it. And being a white car it was a lot more fun. And I'll put one up here just for fun. And it's going to be quick and easy. I'm not going to do the whole car. So we've got our nicks. We've got what we want. And we're going to, again, start with our light colors. And we're going to actually put the, paint, put the uh, colors on with a sharpened toothpick. So a resharpened toothpick. So I just slice them down as, to as fine a point as I can get them. Grab the color that I want, which in this case is my rust. And this bottle will open because I already opened it tonight. Yeah, look at that. Oh, this was the one I needed all the water for. Okay, hang on. Uh, what do we got here? That feels good. Yeah. Uh, get yourself a little bit of paint on the end of that toothpick. And you're going to color up these cuts. And just putting the um, paint in the cut, make you, it really makes it stand out, just, just that little bit. But we're going to, of course, go farther than that. And again, I got to take these off. You guys learned anything tonight? It's how not to do a clinic. I'll tell you what.
get the paint on too thick, just wipe it off a little bit. It'll still look fine. Um, okay, I got that, I got that. Okay, you can see where the, when I put the nicks and the scratches and the cuts. We still good? There you go. Usually, I was able to handle it to somebody right there earlier. Um, so I'm going to let that dry as it goes around. It'll be dry by the time I get. But just kind of figure out, you know, look at the picture of the car and where you think it needs scratches and whatnot. And like on a car like that or the Sioux line cars that have the big red door. Uh, with a big Sioux line on the side. Those are a lot of fun to do. They just take a long time because, especially if you want to get every little nick and every little drop or, or, or rust streak or whatever the case, um, it just takes a while. But when you get done, you, it's pretty, it's a work of art and you're happy with it. Unless you got a big fingerprint on it, <laughs> which they're going to show up on a white car. Okay, so we're going to go to our next color, which is going to be a rustier color. So I'm going to go with, um, not the leather, where did it go? Come on. The burnt sienna again. So, And again, you, just a, 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 a different color, of course, than the one you put on before, but not too dark. So we'll grab some of this. Just touch it up in here. Touch it up down there. And again, you don't have to paint the whole thing. You just got to get a little color in there to offset the previous color. Okay. And again, with your newer your newer scratches, you would have. Uh, lighter color of rust in them. The older ones, of course, are going to be darker. Okay. Uh, that's the dark rust in there. Kind of give it a little bit more depth to it. With the yellow car, it's a little tough to see. Of course, with the white car, it'd come up really good. The yellow is kind of offsetting that orange color. When I do the rust streaks, you'll see them, but they won't pop quite as much as on a white car or a gray car, uh, like a hopper car. But, yeah, uh, that color, the last color I use is what we call, uh, it's called, what we call, what is called um, raw umber. It's a real dark brown. Okay, so. We got our scratches in. We're going to do a little bit of rust on those scratches. So we're going to start with our light colors.
Okay. And again, that's this chalk that draw, try to draw straight down. Occasionally you'll get a little swoop in it and then you have to go back and, and adjust for it, but you can kind of see. And I did that with one of these micro brushes. Uh, you can also do it with one of those really fine pointed brushes that, uh, with one of these, they'll, they'll work pretty good. And then we're going to put a little grime on the bottom, uh, a little dust, a little grime. So I'm going to use one of those face, uh, face brushes and just kind of get it up underneath right where you want it. Maybe swoop, bring it up just a little bit. And you can see some fingerprints on this, so. Oops. Now there were some fingerprints whatnot on here and you can see where they came up. But you can also see how it you don't get any brush marks, but it looks you get a real nice dust to it. Now the other side I did underneath, and you can highlight the different areas. Um, like if you're gonna do uh, ladder rungs on the edge, you know, use one of these one of these with a black and just highlight each uh, where the bolt heads are, right down the edges, uh, that sort of thing. Works really well. And of course, between each uh, coat, you would give a little dull coat or what have you, but I was just kind of speeding it up for, for things. But I think you guys are getting the idea on that. Yeah. What color was that? Oh, it was just a brownish color that I used. Kind of a brown uh, black mix. More to show you how it works as to that's a great color. Um, I tried fading paint with these things, with these face brushes, and it does work pretty good uh, to, to dull the, the whole car down. You know how the paint fades. It's not as good as the ones you've seen, but it does dull it down you know, fade it out a little bit, and it's a good way to do it, it's pretty easy. Uh, like I say, use a brand new brush, and uh, you can use white, you can use light gray. I've used a lighter color, like a lighter green, if I was doing one of these Nevada Western cars, I'd use a lighter green and do that, and, and that fades it pretty good too. But with the white, if you have white uh, decals, it doesn't affect those. You know what I mean? Like if you use green, it's going to make the decals greenish. Whereas if you use white, it's not going to change it. The other thing you can do is you've probably seen where the, the uh, lettering starts running down the side. You can do that with, the, with, with white chalk. Uh, you'll probably use one of these um, micro brushes just right where you want it and just swoop it down just a little bit so it looks like it's coming off. And then if you hit it with a matte fixative, it'll seal it. And that comes in pretty good. Uh, the one last thing I was going to show you, and there's some other tips on here for car trucks and whatnot. I don't have any car trucks, but I do have a set of wheels. And this is how I do my wheels. Uh, if I can find another paintbrush that's not screwed up here. Yeah, that one's pretty good. Just grab some paint, and I use raw umber for my wheels. I stick it right in the middle, twirl the wheel on my finger with this raw umber, put it in there, spin it, and set it aside to dry for however long it takes. It doesn't take long, but you've just now painted the wheel. I know a lot of people, they have the, they spray them and all that, but I just do this. It's, it's a dull color, and then, um, and if you're careful, you won't get it on the tread. If you do, just take a micro brush and, and swirl it off 
And sometimes I don't even wait till it's dry and I'm not gonna do that this time, but I'll take a brown color, sometimes black, but it's some sort of earth tone color. And just go, and this didn't come out quite as well as I wanted. But you take this, just hit it in there with your whatever color you want, whatever chalk color you want, and just leave it. I don't dull coat it because you're going to have to clean the wheel treads. Because once it's in your, your uh, in the truck, it's not really not going to be handled anyway. So it's just going to be in there. They're going to pick up dust anyway. And like I say, this will, it's actually not working out too bad. And again, whatever color you want, sometimes you get, you see some of those new uh, wheel sets that are real rusty, that red rusty color. Of course, most of them are uh, that, basically this raw umber color. And, uh, you know, if you need to, you can mix up your color off two different colors of chalk. You know, use a, a black and then add brown as you need it uh, to get it, you know, that really dark brown, but not quite black, but not brown either. And I just dab it in there, and, uh, and I've got a colored wheel set. Uh, like I say, I put just most of the information on the handout. Um, and I, this is one way of doing it. I'm not saying it's the best way. It's just it's a good, quick, easy way to do it. Uh, don't stress out if it doesn't look quite right. Um, you're your own worst critic, honest. I mean, I can look at those cars and you guys may say, oh, those are great. And I go, well, you know, I know this could have done that. And I know where my, I know where the errors are, but I'm not going to point them out. Yeah, and you don't need to point them out to people. But, um, and if you make a mistake, you can, you can fix it. You know, you can fix it. Like I say, uh, in fact, I had one car that's still on the layout that I had just, you know, it wasn't even a rusted roof, it was a, it was a refrigerator car, and I had done it really nice. It'd be my own road name, and it was looking real good. Boom, I had a fingerprint on the roof right over the door. And I, it was like, again, almost helicopter time. <clears throat> I masked it off and sprayed over it with like fresh paint like it was a patch. Like a patch. And it's still running down on the layout somewhere. So, uh, so you can fix things even, you know, like I say, God forbid you do something on the side, you can always throw some graffiti on it. If yeah. it's that bad, I know. <laughs> That's people come into the layout. Well, how come there's no graffiti and then we have to frog march them out the door? <laughs> so. Uh, any questions on anything? And again, th these techniques will work on um, locomotives. In fact, that's where I first started this was on it. I was doing a SP locomotive and I wanted to do the brake blister burn. And that's how I did it. I did it under that brake blister with the different colors and I, it really came out nice. And I thought, you know, that'd probably work on a boxcar roof. And so that's what I did. I've also, with, the, with these pan pastels, you'll see here on this, that area right there, that's just, that's just chalk. There's no paint or anything in that part right there. Unfortunately, and I apologize, I didn't have the right paint to do that, the gray on the roof, but that really does help. And if you just do that, dull coating it as one is, will help. Um, put a little bit of that gray paint on there, get it kind of mauve look on there. And then, uh, and then put a, at the end of all of it, put a real light layer of black over it. And that kind of, it, it picks up all the little imperfections and makes it look like it's been weathered and whatnot. But I, again, a real light weathering. You know, this isn't the old days when it was steam engines and whatnot. Okay. I'm done. <laughs>